Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you're watching Video Voters Guide. We're, with the support of Metro East Community Media, interviewing candidates for the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Loretta Smith, running for Portland Commissioner Position 2. Welcome, Loretta. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Glad you could join us. Yes. Please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're running in this remarkably crowded field. It is remarkably uh, crowded, but I'm running because, you know, the city that I know and love that I grew up in, is, it's uh, quickly disappearing. Um, we used to live in a city where working class people would be able to afford to have a home. And now people are, are working two and three jobs just to make ends meet. And for me, I wanna make sure that um, I'm on city council so that we can create policies and, and fund resources so that everybody can uh, thrive in this city. I know that it's important that every corner of this community is supported and I have a track record and a background of doing so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. With the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs, and the resulting um, displacement for, of, of housing, these things will be with us for a long time. Uh, how would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? A couple things that we need to do. Um, as you know, we've had uh, four stimulus packages from the federal government. And my background is working in appropriations. Uh, I worked for Senator Wyden for 20 years. And of those 20 years, the last 10, I was specifically assigned to appropriations. And not just to one subcommittee, but to all 13. So I know where the pots of money are. And we're going to have to get some of those pots of money into the city of Portland and into Oregon. Um, as a county commissioner, we had a $2 billion budget that we had to manage. And uh, many of those years we had, um, you know, one time only money that we have above and, and beyond operating expenses. And so what I want to be able to do is leverage, you know, leverage programs that we also do with the city and the federal government so that we're using each other's money and still being able to bring good quality uh, programs in the city of Portland. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If we maintain our current government structure, which city bureau would you want to oversee and why? Certainly I would want to have housing for sure and the Parks Bureau. Uh, I think um, our next wave of civil rights will, will be determined how we house our, our most vulnerable in our city. And I look forward to actually uh, overseeing the housing de uh, department. There are a couple things that I would do quickly. Uh, one of them would be to uh, the city and the county, they both add an additional $35 million of one-time money into the operating budgets of, of the housing uh, bureau, which they now call uh, the joint office. And for me, with that extra $70 million, I would use that money to take half of it and go land bank. The other half, the other 35 million, I would go directly to the people who are on the streets and move them off the streets and into some of our vacant properties that we currently have and offer them wraparound supports with that $35 million. And that's annually, because what I'm seeing is we're not getting a big return on our investment. Um, I think we can do better. We have billions of dollars in the budget. And I know right now COVID-19 is causing us to reduce our budgets, but we actually have an opportunity to, to refocus and reprioritize uh, what's important in this city. And between that and um, leveraging the dollars that we can get from the federal government, I think that that's where we're going to be successful at. Hey. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police, community relations, use of deadly force, and officer accountability? There is no question that we need police accountability in this city. There is no question that we need a different strategy in how we deal with protests and how we deal with police-involved shootings, particularly of uh, communities of color and, and residents who have mental health uh, issues. First, I think we need to address it head on. I think that we need to um, 
we need to be a little bit more stricter in how we uh, permit certain um, certain protests. We had the Proud Boys come in and they, they totally disrupted our city when they came in. And I think the response, the last response that Mayor uh, Wheeler had by bringing community organizations together and saying that we won't tolerate this kind of behavior, I think that that was strength. And that strength in numbers allowed us to have a real peaceful protest when they came. And it allowed us to utilize other other uh, tools in our toolbox to be able to, one, let people have their constitutional right to, to form and to protest, but to do it in a way that it is, um, it protects everyone in our city. And I, and I think that galvanizing of the community and business and uh, elected leaders around the city to come and say, look, this is what, this is what we care about. These are our values. And this is how we're gonna go forward. The other piece is, you know, I strongly believe that we need to have our police living in the city of Portland. A lot of our police officers live outside the city of Portland. If we're gonna have true community policing, we need to be able to uh, live next door to our public safety officers. Um, there, there have been many times when uh, a different decision could have been made had officers known uh, the, the folks that they were trying to police. I know as a mother, it is so very um, taxing to know when my son was out in the evening if he was going to be safe. And he, he got pulled over by the police one day. And um, that has caused him to have trauma to this day when the police pull up next to him. And they didn't pull him over for any apparent reason other than the fact that they thought that he had, he had stolen a car. Uh, but he hadn't stolen a car. He was driving, you know, his mom's car. And so for me, I want to make sure that we have police officers that look like the community. And to be able to walk into community organizations and uh, community places like churches and uh, different school meetings and say, this is honorable work, but it's about the training and education that you give our public safety officers. We need to make sure that they're very conscious of how to uh, engage with different communities and different communities who are vulnerable, particularly those ones who have uh, health and mental health issues. Thank you. We're running quite short on time. I'm going to ask the last question and give you about 30 seconds to answer. Okay. okay. It's about the parks, financial challenges, and certainly the more so since the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our beloved parks? Well, I think we need to, um, we need to bring in probably twice or three times as much uh, funding because the parks are funded through the general fund. We don't have a, a large um, uh, funding mechanism for the parks other than the general fund. But I also, need, I also think we need to partner with our uh, private sector businesses um, because what the parks does, it offers families an opportunity to engage with one another. It gives us an opportunity to exercise. It also gives us a place that we can go for green spaces. And I think if we partner with um, the private sector to try to help increase and improve the funding for the Parks Bureau, I think that would be, a, be a, um, one of the solutions that I would look for to uh, maintaining our parks. When I travel I'm around- Lord, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt you. We're out okay. of time, but thank, thank you. you. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org for information about all the races that you're voting upon and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching. Visit both for